So remember that two strings are distinguishable over a language if there is another string z where exactly one of xz, yz is in L. If S is a set of strings that are pairwise distinguishable over L, then a finite automaton recognizing L must have at least that number of states. So how can we construct a finite automaton recognizing L? So remember, it's possible that no finite automaton exists, but if it does, we might begin as follows. Let our initial set of states correspond to the elements of our pairwise distinguishable set, and if xz is an L, then z maps out a path to an accepting state. So let's try to construct a finite automaton for this language. So we found that a pairwise distinguishable set consists of three elements. So we could start with three states labeled 0, 1, and 1, 0. Now, to distinguish between the state labeled 0 and the symbol or string 0, we'll indicate the state by using square brackets. So, this will be our notation for the state corresponding to the string 0. We'll also include our initial state q0. Now, remember, everything has to go somewhere. The obvious first step is to go from our initial state q0 to either 0 or 1, depending on whether the first symbol is 0 or 1. As it turns out, this will actually work. Let's find our accepting states first. Since no string in L can begin with 0, then there is no path from this state to an accepting state. We don't know what this means yet, so we'll ignore it. Now, suppose our string is 1, 0. Our first step will take us to state 1. Our next step should take us to an accepting state. We'll introduce a new state and call it A, so our complete path is... But suppose our string is 1, 1. Then we can't lead to an accepting state. In fact, no string that starts 1, 1 can be an L, so our path actually leads us to a dead-end state, which we'll call x, and so we might write our path this way. Since x is a dead-end state, either a 0 or 1 will just return us to the state. We could represent this by a loop back to the state. Note that 0 is also a dead state, since no string starting with 0 can be an L, so we'll draw a loop here as well. What if we're at 1, 0? Remember, if our string began 1, 0, we could get another string in the language by appending 1, 0. So we could get to an accepting state by going to another state, where a 0 would take us to A. So remember, things that do the same thing are the same thing. So we need a state where a 0 will take us to the accepting state. But if we're at state 1, a 0 will take us to the accepting state, and so this suggests our transition rule from 1, 0, instruction 1, will take us to state 1. Meanwhile, appending 0 would take us to a dead state. Now, notice that even if we're in an accepting state, we might still have additional symbols to process. Suppose we're in the accepting state. For example, we've processed 1, 0 so far, but there are additional symbols. Now, if the next symbol is 0, we go to a dead state since no string beginning 1, 0, 0 can be part of the language. If the next symbol is 1, on the other hand, we'll be in a state where, provided the next symbol is 0, will return us to the accepting state. And again, things that do the same thing are the same thing, 
we already have a state where a zero will take us to the accepting state, and so we can use the transition from the accepting state, a one will take us to state one. So remember, if you don't find your mistakes, someone else will. Let's make sure this accepts something it should and rejects something it should. It should accept 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0. And we find Meanwhile, it should reject 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1. And we find Which is not an accepting state. Now, notice that our theorem said we need at least three states, but we produced a finite automaton with six states. However, we might be able to simplify it. First, note that it's actually impossible to get to the state 1, 0, so we can omit the state entirely. Next, since both 0 and x are dead-end states, there's no reason to distinguish between them. Remember, things that do the same thing are the same thing. So we'll merge them into a single state. And so we found a finite automaton with four states. But remember, all progress comes from asking, can we do better? Is it possible to find a finite automaton with just three states? We'll answer that question eventually.